Hello students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and Module 3, Reactive Chemistry. We're going to try and put together some of the things that we've looked at in the last couple of videos and talk about the Metal Activity Series. So one of the things that we've started to notice is that some metals are more reactive than others. Group 1 metals in particular are metals which readily react with water, with acid and with oxygen. But even within this group, potassium is more reactive than sodium. We can notice some patterns in the fact that each of these active metals usually um, can react with each of those substances at room temperature or standard laboratory conditions without any addition of uh, extra energy in the form of heat, for example. But there's still some differences in the different reactivities of the metals in the group one. In group two, there are also uh, indicators of some quite active metals. Calcium and barium, for example, are both substances which uh, readily react with water, acid and oxygen as well, but are not as reactive as those reactions that we see from the group one metals. These group two metals are also more reactive than the transition metals. And even within the transition metals, we see differences in the reactivity of things like zinc and copper. When we add zinc to an acid such as sulfuric acid, we can see a reaction where zinc sulfate forms and hydrogen gas is produced. But if we add copper to sulfuric acid, then we have no reaction. We cannot see anything happening in that particular um, reaction vessel. This kind of um, experimental evidence is suggesting that there must be some order of activity of different metals. So what we've done is we've put each of these together based on empirical evidence, so uh, observations from experiments, in order to build up what we call the activity series of metals. Now, the activity of series of metals is very closely related to something that we're going to be looking at very soon, uh, which relates to the oxidation and reduction of each of these different metals. We've looked at some net ionic equations already to show that there is some change happening as metals uh, become ions or ions become metals during displacement reactions. Um, but we will save that for a little bit later. For now, what we just want to have a look at is that there is an order in terms of the reactivity of different metals. Metals that are at the top of the uh, series are the most reactive. These are the ones that tend to react at room temperature with oxygen, with water, with uh, dilute acids, and ones at the bottom are the ones that tend not to react at all. We know our precious metals, the ones that we like to um, have for jewellery, are the ones that are the most stable, they're the least reactive, and they do not react um, at room temperature with oxygen or water, which is a good thing. One of the things that's very useful about an activity series, though, is that it allows us to start to analyse some of those displacement reactions in a little bit more detail. For example, if we look at the position of aluminium and tin, in a solution where we have um, one of these metals placed into a solution of the other, we can actually start to make predictions about the spontaneity of the reaction, whether or not a reaction will or will not occur. If we're putting aluminium metal, solid, into a solution of tin ions, then we know that because the aluminium is higher on the table than tin, if the metal is higher, then we will have a reaction. So this will react. The aluminium will displace the tin from the solution and we will end up with aluminium in solution, three plus, and tin will come out as a solid. However, if for example, we were to place lead into tin,
So that is lead metal into a solution of tin. You will notice in this case that the lead is actually sitting below tin on the table. So that means that if we were to place the lead metal into a solution containing tin ions, there would be no reaction. The reaction would not occur. This is a non-spontaneous reaction. You wouldn't see anything happening. So our activity series allows us to make predictions about the spontaneity of different reactions just by looking at their position in the activity series. One quick thing too before I leave this is that you'll notice that both carbon and hydrogen are sometimes included in activity series tables just as a comparison. Hydrogen is particularly good when we're analysing the reactions which occur between metals and acids because it's the hydrogen ions in solution that are displaced. Thanks for watching.